um, yeah, I can't say I'm pretty happy um, to be here, to see you all here, but I, I can't really see you because of the strong light now. But it's great to have such an event again here in Munich. So um, a warm welcome, and I hope you have a two nice days, also the workshop day after that. So um, yeah, now let's dive into the content. Um, I'm talking about what we did to improve um, the activation of configuration changes in CheckMK. And yeah, in fact, it's more of the technical um, talks um, we have today. So I know you like that. Um, so let's have a look. And it's all about this button. It's, ac it's activating changes you've made to the configuration of CheckMK. This does not necessarily mean you have to do it manually. There's the REST API, which you can also use to activate your configuration changes. And there's also activations happening in the background. If you use the dynamic configuration, the dynamic host configuration, or the automatic service discovery, um, and they detect changes in your infrastructure, maybe on a Kubernetes cluster or v VMware environment, they activate configuration changes in the background. But many of, of us, many of you, are doing manual activation multiple times a day. And in especially larger environments, it's important that it happens fast, so it does not interrupt your manual workflow. In larger environments, this can take quite some time, some seconds, and yeah, since not waiting is also important for a good user experience, a good usability, we wanted to improve the situations around the activation. And this is what the talk is about, at least the first part. Um, if you are working in a single site and do configuration changes, you do it via the user interface. You change your configuration, and then you click on this button. Then in the background, a new configuration for the monitoring core is created, and the enterprise edition for the micro core. And then the core is taking over that file to actually do the monitoring job. So um, there's also some additional steps in distributed environments, for example, which we improved with CheckMK2. Um, this is something we won't look at now. It's only about the core and its config creation. So let's have a look at the process. We start with the configuration you have created before either by the user interface or the REST API. And we need to read it into memory. Hundreds of files are there in your site, and they need to be read. And then we take the files, the content of these files, and compute things. We have rule sets, basically, in these files, host definitions, and so on. And we need to compute the actual host configuration out of it. Every host and its effective attributes together with, with its services and also their attributes. When they need to be checked, check intervals, and so on and so forth. And once that's computed, everything needs to be written to disk as a microcore configuration. And yeah, then in the final step, the microcore takes over and does the monitoring job. So we now look at this whole process with a sample site in mind. 5,000 hosts and 200 thousands of services, which is already a quite impressive site. And we compare two sites, one CheckMK2 site and one CheckMK2.1 site, and look how the timings are of these sites, and then have a look at what we did to improve uh, the, the performance, the timing, and so on. So the first step, reading files from disk. With 2.0, we were with the checkmk.mk files. And in the 2.0 side, this takes eight seconds to load, hundreds of files from a very fast, fast disk, solid state disk or whatever. Um, it takes time to read so many files and actually pass them. So with 2.1, we did some changes which resulted in a much faster processing of these files. And we optimized the file format, the contents of these files. So with the 2.1, we were with the .mk files, which were essentially Python source code. 
in these files, there could be any Python code and the parser would read and interpret it. And interpreting such files takes some time. But we are only storing data in this file. The list of hosts of a folder and it, its attributes, rule sets and uh, so on are stored in .mk files. So it's only data decla declarations which could be stored in, in better formats for this, um, for this uh, job. So what we did is that we um, changed the format of these files. Um, we added a new file format, uh, the .pk .pkl files. Um, the new file format is a Python-specific data format called pickle. And it represents now the host configurations of CheckMK. And it's not no code anymore, and only data declarations that are stored in binary format on disk and can be read a lot faster than the .mk files into memory. But this has some downside. When we only were using the .pkl files, we would not be able to debug what is in the files the actual file content, we could not open this easy, easily in the editor for looking at the content of these files. So the .mk files are still there. They are kept in sync automatically with the .pkl files um, yeah, to give you both uh, worlds and the benefits of both. So it's there for debugging, but also for the Git integration, uh, the setup has in the background to keep track of your changes, the changes to your files. So that's what we did for the first step of the core, config, core compilation. And now we come to the second step, the heavy computation task in memory. Um, we now have the rule sets in memory, host definitions, and so on. And in the next step, we need to compute the effective things for the monitoring core, the attributes of, um, of a host, of a service, and so on. And in CheckMK2, we were with the constant time of 17 seconds um, for this process. And with CheckMK 2.1, we were able to improve this to a quite lower number, to three seconds, um, by introducing a second path for the core config creation, the incremental compilation. So in 2.0, there was always the full compilation and the full com uh, configuration was handed over to the microcore. And if you look at what is happening between two activations, um, if you think about our 5,000 hosts, we normally change only a very small part of the configuration. We add one host, we delete one, we change one attribute of one host, and then we activate this change to see um, how CheckMK is working with it. And if you have such a scenario in mind, you may come to the idea that you could reuse things from previous activations. And this is what the path of the incremental compilation is doing. It is taking the unchanged configuration parts, the host and so on, loading it, and then adding the changes to that configuration file. This can be automatically detected in the background. It leads to accelerated compilation times, and um, yeah, the microcore is in fact unchanged in this uh, part. It is still receiving the full configuration and activating it. And we first implemented that for the most common workflows you have for working on the host configuration. If you add one host to your environment, you edit the attributes of a host, you delete one host, or you even discover the services, then CheckMK is automatically choosing the incremental path in the background. So you as a user won't even recognize um, whether or not the incremental way has been chosen. You only see that the activation is faster um, than the full activation. And this mechanism is automatically used by the user interface and also uh, the REST API in the background and even by uh, the dynamic host management is using this mechanism in the background. So that's the computation path. Now we have everything computed in memory and now the, the final step has to happen to write it as core configuration to disk. And here in CheckMK 
2.0, we essentially had no performance problem. That was quite uh, fast. Two seconds for writing everything down is good. Um, we were with the binary configuration format, but in this area, we had some other problem. Not performance, but supportability. And this is why we decided to take some time. We've won by the previous two steps and trade it against supportability. And it is about um, situations that can happen at customer sites. Um, the microcore is doing something you can't really explain. Then you need to understand what is in the state file of the core, what is in the configuration of the core. You need to make some sense out of it. And in the past, that was only hardly possible with debuggers and some fancy tools. Only a, s a small amount of people can use. Uh, so it's a very uh, tough job to, to yeah, get the idea what is happening. And we clearly needed uh, to be able to do that easier in a more accessible way. So we came to the point where we, where we decided that we want to use Protobuf. It's a data format provided by Google. And if you have the data available, the core configuration file, for example, which has been created at the customer side, and you have a scheme definition of what is in the data, then you can make sense out of all this and get a human readable format out of it. You can dump the contents of the binary files and interpret it as a human, understand it, and yeah, analyze the situation in a more comfortable, easier, faster way. And we are now using it for all the files the core is working with, um, the configuration, is, which is loaded into the core, and also for the state file that is used by the core to retain its current state of hosts, services, downtimes, acknowledgments, and so on. They are saved in the state file, um, also to be able to shut down the core and restart it again and keep um, all the things that have been known previously um, in place. So the whole thing is not, not a black box anymore. We can now look into these files, and not only we as a, a supporter, um, doing third-level support or something. It's also helpful for customers who want to look under the hood, but also for our partners who are in the support situation where they need to help customers. So how does it actually look, actually, um, look like? With CheckMK 2.0, that was something yeah, like this. Um, I bet you can spot the bug. So. And that's how it should look like. Yeah, we have added commands to the CheckMK site, which you can all execute if you're with 2.1. Uh, one command for dumping the state, one command for dumping the configuration. And on the left side, um, you see uh, something uh, that is a dump of a state file, or at least an extract of that. Um, you can already guess what's there. There's, there are some global state flags, then there are host information, a host called my host, everything is okay for him, and so on. So that can easy, easily be understood. So that's really useful. And even if we um, yeah, t took some time there, we have improved overall. If we sum it that, uh, that up now, we are down um, yeah, by a pretty good uh, percentage uh, what the, uh, in terms of performance. So that seems to be really a good outcome for the whole uh, operation of uh, introducing um, the incremental activation. Um, yeah, so that's it for this topic. And now I have some additional things I want to show you, some improvements that we have made in addition to the other things. And it's mostly about improving um, the situation for very large installations. We know CheckMK can scale in many different dimensions. It's the obvious hosts and services, but also there, there, there are um, different dimensions which can be uh, scaled into. Some environments have um, host labels, hundreds of labels assigned to a single object. Some environments have tag groups with hundreds, multiple hundreds of tag choices. Um, and other dimensions which we um, yeah, can hardly 
um, yeah, think of. So um, this release, we decided to take action in two areas. We decided um, to improve the situations around folders and browsing through a huge amount of folders and also um, improve the situations for environments which have thousands of users created in CheckMK. So let's have a look at the first uh, thing, uh, at working in the setup with thousands of folders, multiple thousands. Yeah? These are the very large installations. So um, we've talked about this before. Um, the common workflow in, config uh, in configuration, in configuring CheckMK is working with hosts, browsing through the folders, and configuring hosts there, and so on. And um, when analyzing larger installations, we have learned um, that it can be yeah, a rather tedious task to browse through the hierarchy of folders that may be eight layers deep. Uh, if, you, uh, if you go eight layers deep and every page change needs some seconds to load, um, then that can be uh, yeah, not, not a straightforward thing to do. Um, so that's not how it should be. Usability um, yeah, needs to be, usability also means that doing such common tasks is yeah, rather quick and um, yeah, goes, uh, goes easy. So um, yeah, we decided to work on that and I think the numbers speak for themselves. Um, if, you have, if you think about going eight, eight layers deep, loading eight, eight pages, and you always have the four seconds of waiting time, um, then you wait a lot of time, and that is not how it should be. Now with the new timings, um, yeah, we are really down to, um, to a really quick click-through task where you yeah, can work easily with. And this um, not only affects really large installations where you have 9,000 folders, that's not hosts, that's folders. So. Um, that's really large, and um, even if you have only um, yeah, a quarter of these folders, um, you may even realize this. So, um, yeah, it's already uh, a good improvement, I would say, for configuring CheckMK. And now, in even the largest environments have no issues in working this in this area. The second um, thing I wanted to highlight is uh, thing we did um, yeah, analyze and improve in the status part of the CheckMK user interface. It affects um, environments basically which have thousands of users and it affects every user who opens up the status interface to view data in CheckMK. It's about um, viewing at start of status tables but also um, loading dashboards um, or similar. And to understand what is happening uh, there in the background, you need uh, to know a bit about what is happening yeah, there in the background. If you open up a status table, TickMK first needs to decide which view to show to you. It could either be a view which has been built by us and shipped with TickMK. It could be one which you have created for your own, or it could be something which has been created by another user and shared with you. And here we are facing the problem uh, we have solved there. Um, because all these thousand user profiles, which, is, which might have been created in your environment, need to be searched um, for the view you might want to see now. And yeah, by adding some caching mechanisms and improvements to the whole al algorithms, um, yeah, we were able to improve um, the situation uh, for users in these environments. And it's, it is even noticeable for smaller sites, so you don't have to have thousands of users. Um, it may also be noticeable uh, for other um, smaller environments. Now to another area of CheckMK, another central critical part. It's um, about the micro core or also the Nagios core. Um, in fact, live status, um, which is the interface we use to get status data out of the monitoring core. 
every component who consumes this information to display it, for example, the user interface or the REST API, they are all based on live, live status to fetch the information out of the monitoring core. So it's a critical, critical component of CheckMK, and it's um, good to have a fast and good performing system there. And when also analyzing um, installations um, which have a very active user base, uh, a user environment, uh, environment of many users, um, you've seen that um, there is room for improvement when it comes to the um, data protocol we use for exchanging information. In the past, um, with all existing versions so far, we were always using the Python data format for getting the data in a structured form out of the microcore into the user interface. And now um, we've learned that in current Python versions, it's much faster to pass the same data um, in JSON format. It's 10 times faster. And while being 10 times faster, it is consuming um, 40 times less memory. So if you have larger documents which you're exchanging, um, huge result sets, hundreds of rows um, with, with a lot of labels and so on, um, it can also yeah, have a huge impact, a huge spike in your memory consumption on your monitoring system, which is now um, yeah, much better with this change. Uh, the other two changes are related to uh, authorization filtering. This is uh, the filtering that is applied to users which are not um, fully permitted administrators. The administrators which can only work on smaller parts of CheckMK, only see smaller um, parts of your hosts, for example. Um, if you do live status queries or the user interface is doing these live status queries, you always have the auth user filter set, which reduces the rows of the result sets by your personal permissions. And this has um, been improved um, in terms of performance. Um, the filtering is now done more actively, effectively. So um, this is also a change which um, affects all queries being made between the user interface and the core. And the last um, part is about um, a more specific live status table. It's uh, the hosts by group table and the services by groups table, um, which are mostly used by the BI, um, where we have had a similar change um, to the authorization filtering that also improves the performance. So all in all, um, we have a lot of um, smaller and bigger uh, performance improvement. Um, and yeah, now I'm curious if you have some questions related uh, to that topic.